talking about or, or these these laws that we've been considering coming up for a long time. But uh, probably the number one thing that is that we're discussing a lot, it, it, and it's a it's a tough topic. Um, uh, last year, the a bill passed that uh, discussed what they were going to do with the voodoo licenses that are around the state that never got a home that people own, and so. There was a task force that was built uh, called uh, the Social Equity Task Force that's been meeting uh, for the past year, or you know, about the past year or so, trying to figure out how to bring some social equity and those licenses together. And then they've also been tasked with coming up on how to bring more minorities together in with the cannabis industry. Um, and that groups, most of that emphasis has been bringing in more retailers. So there's been all kinds of discussions on whether minorities should be allowed to, should we put together some more licenses? How would you allocate those licenses? Who should get those? And you can imagine it's been an infinitely tough topic to come to consensus. Um, WACA has put out a white paper on it uh, that's up on our website and, and have been engaging on this topic, but mostly been waiting for what the Social Equity Task Force uh, comes up with their recommendations back to the legislature. And they're gonna take those back and determine what they're gonna do. Um, you know, we're, we're hearing all kinds of things, uh, you know, 50 license, 50 more retail licenses in the state that would correspond with the census. You know, census data shows that our state's grown about a much, uh, about 13% in the last 10 years, and that would equate to 50 more retail licenses, and should those be allocated to minorities? So that's part of the discussion. Uh, we've heard as many as doubling those licenses, the amount of licenses here in the state. So um, our, our, all, a lot of these associations are waiting around to see what they're going to recommend before we're able to determine how that's gonna go. So, but um, it, it's a tough one to figure out how to navigate. Um, you know, there's, there's also some talk. I mean, just as, if anybody in this room who's been cannabis understands it's not just a license, it also takes a lot of money to be able to get these off the ground. And so there's also a lot of talk in, in, at least from my humble opinion, is to be successful on this goal, we're gonna to need to also figure out how to get some funding to be able to help support these folks because I sold four paid in full pieces of real estate and one commercial building that was almost paid off to be in this business. And so if we're gonna, if we're gonna get uh, to have my, more minorities as part of this, we've also gotta get some licenses and we've also gotta get some funding to help make that happen. So. Uh, that's probably the one, the number one thing that we're kind of watching and looking and attending those meetings uh, and, and seeing how that's playing out. Hey Troy, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Even if it's out of state hemp, we need to control this market to have it be safe. Um, but we, we're working on one that, uh, that hemp and hemp derivatives, Delta 8, 9, 10, and future unknown ones, to be allowed in a regulated market as long as they are tested, transparent, and safe. So I think what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna to have to embrace some of those things and bring them into that system. It makes sense rather than sell them at gas stations is, is really where we came uh, to a decision as an organization. It's super complicated and a lot of it I don't understand, but, and there's a lot of contention about bringing some of that product from out of state. So we're already starting to see some of the out of state be brought in uh, with issues around hemp. And that I, I've read and taken a look at that bill and it's, it's mind blowing to even read it and how they're defining it. Um, out of state investment and owning more than five retail shops, that's that we kind of touched on that. I mean, one that shows up every year, and God, if you, if you know anybody that, that, that's, a, that's a processor that does concentrates, this makes them crazy. They've had this bill out about three times, and it's to lower the THC percentage in concentrates to under 30%, which anybody that makes concentrates gives you this look, they give you this look like, that's not possible, you dumbass. But, there is a, a, a legislator and a constituent who is up there making an argument talking about how those, that concentrates can cause mental health issues or problems. And we need to have more people there in Olympia explaining that, that, that that's not the case. But that gets brought up every year. And that one's a national topic that's getting uh, attention nationwide. And, I, and anybody who's doing concentrates knows. And, it's a big portion of our business too. So it needs to get explained to legislators and it needs another round of people to come in and talk about those items with legislators to keep them hit.